Hey Manance, welcome back. So, Rings of Power. I decided to wait until the season had ended to pass comment on this one because it is a bit of a divisive one amongst fantasy fans. There was so much to love about the show, but I just couldn't, which is such a shame because it means I missed out on a lot. I fall into the category of viewer whose suspension of disbelief capabilities is easily unsuspended. And as you can probably guess about me, I find it very hard to shut my brain off and just enjoy my entertainment. And that's why Rings of Power has ultimately been so divisive amongst our community of fantasy lovers. Too many have been jarred by the many instances throughout the season that have dragged them out of their viewing enjoyment. While others were watching the visually stunning Mordor volcano scene, I couldn't appreciate the moment or get lost in the cinematic majesty of it because I kept thinking about a documentary I watched last year on the White Island eruption and the social post by Stephanie Browett who lost her father and sister in the eruption and has been detailing her very slow recovery from very extensive burns. So while people were posting about how cool the volcano scene in Rings of Power was, I was thinking about how none of the characters would actually survive something like that. Then I remembered that many of the characters need to survive because they feature in later parts of the show, have very important roles, so they must have plot armor. Now, this unending stream of thoughts stopped me from enjoying what I was actually seeing. I couldn't appreciate how cool it was to see Mordor being formed, and they're instead thinking about the necessary third degree burns they'll have to show for any accuracy and how that won't fit with the general aesthetics of the show, or be at all survivable for most of the characters at their current level of medical advancement. I'm sat there shaking my head thinking that the biggest injury we've seen on a survivor is a mild graze to the face of the queen, who's now blind. Oh, and that Halbrand somehow survived a ride across Middle Earth with a gaping wound to his torso? And down the spiral I go. Now, either Amazon didn't realize they were creating a show that would lose a significant portion of its audience because of these issues, and they were genuinely caught off guard by the resulting backlash, or they already knew it would happen and they didn't care because they know that their viewing figures will be high enough that it won't matter. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here and say that the Amazon execs knew exactly what they were doing because they've already started to recognize that the fantasy market is splitting in two. Say what you want about Amazon, but I really wouldn't put this one past their algorithms. So we have a fantasy audience that's dividing. Into camp one, you have the rule of cool fantasy fans. Those who have the ability to shut off their brains and just enjoy what they're watching. I'm genuinely envious of that. And then there's camp two, the rule of logic fantasy fans. That's the one I'm in. It's filled with us weirdos who are forever being told that they think too much and who frequently miss out on the beauty and the underlying message that the storyteller is trying to convey because, well, they got stuck in various plot holes along the way. Camp two is that strange dichotomy of people who can honestly say sentences like, well, the bit with the dragon was believable, but are you telling me that they have clippers and can do a fade in medieval times? This happens because the ability to suspend disbelief and accept a fantasy premise and the ability to suspend disbelief over inconsistencies in a story are two separate things, although they frequently get confused with being the same thing. If you can't suspend your disbelief through the acceptance of a premise of a world where, say, dragons exist, then you aren't a fantasy fan because ultimately that's all fantasy is. Not dragons, but the enjoyment of exploring realities unlike your own. But once you've accepted the premise, you're either then the type who gets jarred by illogical decisions made following on from the premise, or you're not. And this is in no way an insult to those in camp one, by the way. I'm not saying they don't like highbrow works or that they aren't thinking about things logically. So if that's what you're hearing, then I apologize, but that's not what I meant. What I'm saying is that they have an ability I lack, an ability to shut off the brain enough that they can appreciate a story for the messaging the creator is trying to get across, rather than getting bogged down in all of the details of how it got there. Do you know how much I've missed out on because I don't have that ability? There is no right or wrong here, no better or worse. There is just different, different people appreciating different types of fantasy. So what does this all mean? Well, either those of us in camp two need to learn to meditate or something else to shut off the parts of our brains that are getting in the way of our enjoyment, medicate to moderate or something like that. Or we can accept that our brains are what they are and that we enjoy what we enjoy, which means that we need to encourage the creation of more books and shows that actually match us as a target audience. 
If this happens, then instead of us ruining the enjoyment of shows actually meant for Camp 1 types, we'll be able to enjoy shows meant for Camp 2. We just need a better labelling system. This will happen more with time anyway, even if just for capitalistic reasons. Camp 2 has been so starved for years that I bet we are a very loyal and lucrative fan base if you're listening Amazon execs. Sure, it requires you to put in a little bit more effort along the way, sense checking in the earlier stages and consulting with experts at every step, but I promise you, powers of B over fantasy, that if you recognise us, rule of logic fantasy fans, as a separate audience that we are, and find a way to market to us directly as a fan base rather than just putting something out to the fantasy community and hoping for the best, then we will reward your efforts wisely. Thank you. Bye.